Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So first off, I'd like to give a special birthday shout out to one of my YouTube members, Argent Ryans. Thanks for your support. In today's video, we're going to go over Aesukiya as a five star, and I'll do a little bit of uh, gameplay and uh, tell you what I think about her. But of course, the most important question of all is, is she hot or not? Well, if you know my taste towards AS Suzette, you know I really like women in their kimonos and in the eastern continent. Anyways, Sukiya is a very powerful fire slash support and DPS user. Uh, she is speed based, so keep that in mind. Now her VC, level 3, MP of all party members, minus 50%, and stack 3 of her... Um, I'm not going to bother mentioning that on its user. So I will show you later on in this video how to uh, apply those and also how to best use them. They really do help enhance her moves, which you'll see shortly in this video. And you can see the three five-star moves we're going with. Howling Surge, of course, it's her four-star move, which is already uh, available even in her NS form. And of course, her two AS moves as well. She does have other moves in her kit. However, I do feel that by far, these are the three best moves. Howling Surge, of course, is uh, self damage 30%, physical resistance down on all enemies minus 50% for three turns. Keep in mind, this is not an attack. And so because of that, it is a guaranteed debuff. And if you think about it, that's 50% more on all your physical attackers. Of course, doesn't help magic users, but most of the time you'll be using her on a uh, physical fire team, slash team, or um, you know, other uses as well. Now, if you look at the move underneath, the Unburdened Embers, uh, it does give her guaranteed crit, but that pales in comparison to the Princess of Divinity. Crit rate of all party members guaranteed 100% for one move, speed plus 30, katana equipped characters plus 30, and all of these buffs last for three turns. If you use three of the stacks, the effect increases based on the number of stacks of the Reset, reset Juin, uh, Sujin, and Keep in mind, at 3 stacks, that adds 10 additional percent per uh, stack when you finally do Princess of Divinity. So the whole idea is to get 3 stacks, then activate Princess of Divinity. You'll get 60% speed increase, 60% uh, Katana equipped characters damage by uh, increase, and of course, crit rate for 3 moves instead of 1 move. That is massive. Keep in mind, she is a Katana user, of course, so that means extra damage for her. And her spam move, Ankai uh, Rashomon is AoE, Fire Slash, times 2 XL, inflicts pain, which is great. Not guaranteed, but still inflicts pain, and stacks those um, you know, orbs on her, increased damage based on speed, and of course, increased number of attacks based on the number of stacks. So once you use Princess of Divinity for three, after three orbs, you'll get um, you know, all that boost to yourself, and then those increased speed stacks uh, will help you do tons of damage with this spam move. It does take a little bit of time to set it up, which is why a lot of people would VC in and give her three uh, stacks. However, there are other ways to get those very quickly as well. And if you're wondering, if you crit with that move, I don't believe it gives you two stacks. It's still one stack at a time, uh, to my knowledge. So in, uh, in case of a five-star board, you can see her two moves here. And we'll just go up the board as usual. Keep in mind, she is an Eastern and Mask um, personality. So you can use Grasta that enhances that. And if you have the NS style, you can increase her power by 10, even though she is more of a speed based unit and her damage is scales off speed. Now, in terms of Katana, uh, her Grasta, we can see we have enhanced pain for the most part. So let's take her out for a spin. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So obviously, like most DPS and support units, she can't self-heal. Um, in her normal style, with her manifest, actually, she does have a life steal ability. But of course, with her, uh, you know, AS form, doesn't nearly have the same um, utility in that sense. Although it, obviously, she has much more powerful moves in her NS form, in her AS form. Now you can clearly see she can easily handle most mobs with a single attack. Now against a horror, it's going to be a little bit tricky because, like you said, um, there isn't any sort of heal, and so you really have to out damage the enemy. Note that the pain is applied, although it isn't guaranteed, and as you attack more times, um, notice the number of attacks increases as well the damage increases. So um, we've already hit um, 
quite a bit. Now we consumed those three stacks to give her plus 60% power and speed. And unfortunately, we're low on life. So we're going to have to apply Howling Surge, which in decreases physical resistance by 50%. And then we just slashed it once with the uh, half AF bar, ending this horror fight very quickly. Now, I know you must be asking, hey, Will, that's not very elegant, pretty lame, not much damage. Okay, so in the next part of the video, we're actually going to show you three consecutive battles against uh, different difficulties of uh, bosses, shall I say, to kind of um, showcase what she can do. Now, a first example, uh, obviously, this is level 80 Serene, which you can re-challenge in the third floor of IDA um, after beating her five times to get her five-star uh, move. And also, don't forget, you can grind out her light in future Garalia um, dungeon once you get there after chapter 76. Now, that being said, we're going to have some fun with the all Katana team. Keep in mind that we're not using any zones, and so without zones for those who are newer to the game or haven't really experienced this uh, the number of attacks really really matter when in zone no matter how many hits you do um, it charges the bar a certain amount in the case of outside zone number of hits matters it's such um, so we're going to use multi-hit units we obviously said it is coming keep in mind that japan just announced her uh, manifest and i'm using of course her brother shion uh, zami and a whole eastern team and we're going to just uh uh, deal a bunch of damage with Aesakita just to kind of show what we're up against. So keep in mind we did Howling Surge, we did Princess of Divinity, and they start slashing, 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 and obviously um, Sukiya can do a lot of damage. Now one thing to keep in mind, because she actually builds up her a number of attacks as she gets more stacks, when you do consume the first time uh, her three stacks for Princess of Divinity, uh, her first couple of attacks won't nearly be as powerful. Also, those orb ones that's on her actually gives her enhanced uh, stats as well. And so, um, you know, you really want to, especially against tougher bosses where they're multi-stage, uh, you want to leave yourself at a lower number of stacks so that as you do each consecutive turn and you attack once, it gives you more orbs such that you'll have your maximum power when you need to uh, do the most damage against bosses, especially those with HP stoppers. Now also, uh, this just illustrates the fact that you can actually share grass, especially after chapter 76 when you do have that enhancement um, ability, those orange grass stuff for those who are still relatively new to the game. Those are all unlocked there and um, basically they can share their abilities to everyone depending on what kind of grass stuff they have. Okay, so that was obviously very straightforward, not much to do there. Now. Next step, let's take on Melosia and see what we're up against. Now, keep in mind, I realize that this team is extremely um, uh, catered to this kind of fight. We do have Melissa, obviously, we have Aesukiya, we have Milsha, and we have Aesio. Now, if you're wondering, uh, you know, is Aesukiya really needed in this fight? Uh, one thing I would mention in general to keep in mind is that you really do want well, at least one crit center on your team. Um, and if you don't have AS4 or if you're not using AS4 in this case, you can use her. She does a ton of damage and she can help set up extra damage uh, and crit for your entire team. Also note that um, in the first phase of this battle, because the Molosia changes forms and doesn't keep their debuffs, I didn't bother applying um, Howling Surge against the Aldo form. And we're just going to set up uh, this is the beginning of turn 2, and we're really depending on um, Milsha's end of turn attack. Uh, if you want some more, um, I guess, explanation of that, you can watch my 5-star review of Milsha as well as AS Seal, as well as uh, Melissa for some extra tips on that. Uh, you can see that we've really pumped up the damage and allowed all those crit stacks um, given by guaranteed crit for AS Sakia to really power up our other two DPS. And to be fair, AS Sakia is no slouch in dealing damage either. Now we VC'd in Mayufa, and keep in mind that Mayufa's VC gives everyone 50% increased crit damage. And so that's where you see those big numbers come from. It's not that we're not already powering up the units, the extra 50% crit damage stacks up on all the other um, you know, buffs you already have, allowing you to do tons and tons of large numbers. And now we have enough uh, AF bar, and we just did a you know, one round, and that's it. Now I realize this isn't like the most elegant battle. Some people can end it in one or two turns uh, depending on how uh, stacked their team is and of course uh, fooling around with the grass to really pull um, and maximize the damage. I'll show you my grass to loadout. Um, it is pretty uh, I guess enhanced as well as shared. So you can see that uh, we do have 
pain, pain, pain. And that's one thing I would recommend for top tier DPS that you're using. Uh, put p three pain Grasta, especially uh, if you're at the end game where you can share Grasta. And you can use someone in the back or someone else who shares the same uh, weapon type and you can use them to carry um, or be a Grasta slave. Now in this case, for example, Yuri holds the power in Inferno Katana that powers up Milsha even though we didn't use Yuri in this fight other than carrying some Grasta. In our final part of the video, we're going to take on uh, one of the tougher bosses in the game uh, or optional super bosses, the Twins. Now, in our previous fight in Melosia, uh, with each phase, the debuffs did not last. And so we actually had to use an alternate strategy to kind of uh, make sure we dealt enough damage between each phase. Now, in this case, the twins, um, depending on how much damage you're doing and whether or not you allow them to escape from certain parts of the uh, battle and phases, they will not remove their debuffs. Now, there is an opportunity for them to do so, but we're going to kill them and push them to the next phase without them being able to do so. And so we did a one-turn AF with Melissa. I know that Melissa's uh, most useful in her first round. However, she really does allow us to stack all those debuffs and buffs on yourself, as well as the debuffs on the enemy, allowing us to really do a ton of damage. And so we are already in the um, turn two. Second phase has now been started. Now, if you don't deal enough damage here, uh, Justine will actually remove all debuffs from her. However, we already used Sakia. And note that we didn't even have the full stacks. Remember earlier I said, uh, try to leave her at lower stacks so that you finally have the three stacks when the final phases or the later stages of the battle are there. And in this case, we are trying not to do that. You can see that uh, she's not even at the full number yet. In this case, we have already pushed past phase two. And keep in mind, we are uh, allowing Milsha to do a ton of damage to end our turn attack, pushing it directly into phase three and finally the final phase here. Now, these are pretty tight DPS checks, and so you can see the team is extremely tailored and you have to really work on the rotations as well as the Grasta and, like I said, um, having very powerful DPS characters. But we rely on all of them and they work all together. And I will say and emphasize again, having a guaranteed crit center on any DPS team, whether or not it's elemental or weapon zone, really, really helps to defeat bosses. And if you don't, those, um, you know, not that you can't get great crits all the time, but by not having them guaranteed, you will lose a lot of DPS. So uh, bear that in mind. Anyways, hopefully, at least in this video, I showed you some of the, um, I guess, ways to use uh, AS Sukiya, as well as uh, some different ways of setting up Grasta. Okay. And of course, I will show you my loadout shortly. Uh, one last thing I want to mention about Grasta, especially some advanced tactics with those uh, uh, enhanced Grasta. Uh, most of the time, people use uh, three pain Grastas, obviously on the top DPS, which we mentioned earlier. And you'll enhance one of them with the enemy numbers or the last stand Grasta, which allows uh, extra damage if you're fighting more than one enemy. And finally, you will enhance one of the other ones with uh, the Rose with Thorns, which increases damage by 15% but increases MP cost by 50. Now in uh, battles where you're only needing a couple turns, that's probably not gonna make much difference. And you can see that um, Milsha is enhanced in that way. Now, I understand that I could probably optimize the grass set as well as the setup further. However, you know, as I'm throwing together this video and trying to edit it and, um, you know, honestly practice, um, this is what I got for now. Anyways, in conclusion, Aesukiya is extremely uh, versatile she fits in multiple teams, fire, fire slash, uh, slash teams, uh, as well as helps with crit setting for other types of teams as well. I would highly recommend uh, trying to get her and keep in mind, she'll also uh, boost uh, stats if you have her at level 80 for the upcoming ES Sukiya as well. And finally, for those who don't have ES Sukiya yet, if you do summon an ES Sukiya, uh, Sukiya later on, uh, you'll have access to side grade back to ES Sukiya as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.